Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me today, as always, is my cameraman, producer, director, uh, IT guy, and he's also my husband, Phil Gordimer. And good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you're watching from, and welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. And now back to our host. <laughs> so normally we open up with me shaking a cocktail, but we didn't want to do that today, but we were going to make a cocktail, of course, but I'm going to make it for you right now. Now, if you missed it, Friday's episode was for a pumpkin pie martini, and that's what I'm going to be making today. So let's get started. I've got a nice glass. Actually, I don't want this first. I want these first. We need to prep these glasses. We gotta make them a little pretty. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna rim the edges in pumpkin pie spice and sugar. So all we're gonna do, take a wedge of lemon, give this little rub around each one. There we go. And we're just gonna dip them into this sugar and spice mixture. Be generous, you want it to taste like pumpkin pie. So there, you have that. I'm just gonna use a little bit more. There we go. And do the other one. You know, we always test these cocktail recipes out many times and we have a lot of fun doing that for mm, you. Why did the heat go on? Mm. I, I don't know. Uh, it's cold outside. Did you turn it off? I thought I did. All right, let's mix a cocktail. In here, actually I need to read this recipe. I need my phone and my spectacles so I get it right for you. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna start with whipped cream vodka. This is the kind that I use, that I like. Uh, make sure it's whipped cream. There's lots of flavors out there. We need four ounces or 120 mils. Or a little more if you like. Half and half is next. And we need one and a half ounces or 45 mils. All right. Pure maple syrup is the next ingredient. And make sure, please, please use real, genuine, honest to goodness, pure maple syrup. Don't use pancake syrup. It's not gonna taste the same. And we need one ounce or 30 mils. And now the pumpkin. This is 100% pumpkin puree. It's just plain pumpkin. Make sure this is what you use. Don't use the uh, pumpkin pie filling or pumpkin pie mix because that already has lots of other seasonings in it that you might not want and other ingredients. You want plain pumpkin. Three generous tablespoons. They don't have to be exactly measured because you want it to be pumpkin-y. All right. Got a shaker full of ice and in we go. Shaky, shaky. All right, I shook it a little normal, a little longer than I normally do because I want that pumpkin to get all through there. And now, into the glasses. Look at that color. Mmm. Pumpkin pie martini. Now let me deliver one. No, I'll come my... to you. Okay, you can come to me. See if I can do it without shaking the camera as I walk by. 
Well, we are on a concrete slab, so. All right. Cheers. Thanks for joining us today. Mm. That's good. And if you're watching us live mm. at, in chat, YouTube chat, go ahead and ask a question. Tell us what, where you're from. What's the temperature out there Here, today? Take this with you. Oh, that would help. Yes. Yeah. And then like last time, don't be coming up after my cocktail if I don't drink it fast enough for, for you. All right. We can always rely on Hank to give us the weather. Which is 55 degrees here in Arizona this morning, up from 37 at 5 a.m. What was it here this morning? It was kind of cold, too. It was 44 this morning. 40, okay. It's 60 now. Right. That's, that's not terrible. And a shout-out to... Um, to John Barker for here to record, who worked with me last week and helped us fix our YouTube uh, chat issues. So everyone's picture should be showing up. Not so much for Facebook, but he didn't write that program. So we're still working on that issue. Except that little glitch we had this morning with yeah, your yeah, well, account. We won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're talking all about bacon. It's bacon or bust. I've got here, Lots of bacons. This was fun, and boy, did we get some Oops. side eye in the store yesterday when we were doing our grocery shopping and we're loading up all this bacon, and the the, the cashier was kind of looking at us like, "What? On, uh, what? Really?" Let's talk about some types of bacon. In America, we have what's known in other parts of the world as streaky bacon. This is. A pretty common brand here and this is what we know as bacon. Now you can get them smoked with hardwood, um, maybe, oh they're both hardwood, sometimes it's applewood, um, sometimes cherry. You can get thick or thin slices. So that's what we know as bacon. Then there's some of those other types of bacon that we have like chicken bacon and of course turkey bacon. Buckle up, kids. Bacon overload is about to begin. Yes, it is, Cat. Yes, it is. Um, Phil kind of cringed when I bought this. I'll eat it. Uh, you know, it, it's not the most terrible product in the world. Um, he doesn't yes, care it for it. <laughs> but they try. You know, then we have Canadian bacon. That's something that, I don't know if this is really how they have bacon in Canada, but it's a product we know. It's kind of like a little smoky ham slice. This is what gets used on things like um, Eggs Benedict. But it's pretty much delicious either way, whatever you use it on. And I bought all this because I had coupons, so that helped. Of course, there are some things that you think are bacon and are not bacon, like salt pork. Um, I've used this in cooking before in some episodes. Salt pork is made from part of the pork belly. Uh, it's usually made from the part that they th would throw away. It's usually made from scraps of the pork belly and other areas. And it's cured with salt and sometimes salt and sugar. But it's not smoked. But that's all it's done. It's very simply prepared. It's much, much smoky, uh, not smokier, saltier than bacon because it's salt pork. So it's really major. I love bacon, but only from my local farmer's market. Yeah, me too. We're going to talk about that too. Can you use this in place of bacon in cooking? You can. It's going to add, it doesn't crisp up like, like streaky bacon does or other types, but it does add a great flavor and great saltiness and brininess to things. And I think you just used that in the five mother sauces for Sauce tomato. I did. I did, absolutely. And we're going to, I think we use it in the uh, uh, Espanol too. I'll have to look at my recipe. Of course, then there are these lovely things. We used to call them Bacos. I don't know if that brand went away, but this is actually a soybean product. I don't know if they have that in the UK or other parts of the world. They kind of taste like bacon. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have a brother my oldest brother, who used to eat a whole jar of these as a snack. He just loved them, and ugh, yeah. I, again, I don't know when I'll reuse these, but it wasn't expensive, and I had a coupon, so. Can we add that uh, to the category of one you shouldn't even be considering bacon? <laughs> well, yeah, so those- Oh, 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 
This is interesting. What? <laughs> Hold on. Let me uh, shift the right keys here. This is this is actually good. How about a bacon cocktail, like a bacon infused whiskey or vodka from now? Michelle? If I didn't know that wasn't our daughter Michelle, it could be. It very well could be. Um, yeah, if I can find some, I know you can make them yourself. I, I've seen recipes for it. My only concern is that I've had some of them where it's like bacon fat in the whiskey, and it, it meat leaves a weird feeling. Like like you drink it and you get the Bacon fat coating your mouth. It's kind of weird. But I know there are better ones out there. So do we get then Kevin the whiskey snob to try bacon oh, fat in his whiskey? Right. And let us yeah. know? Kevin, if you're watching, Kevin Gordimer, our son, if you're watching, find us some bacon whiskey. <laughs> I know he's going to comment and say something soon about it. Blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> yeah. Other types of bacon, there's what the English know is bacon, which I couldn't get. It's a little different than what we know. They have streaky bacon, but... Isn't there's more like pancetta? A little bit yeah. more, yeah. And then, of course, there is pancetta, which I couldn't get yesterday. Normally, I find it all over our supermarkets, and they didn't have any. But it's usually in a paste. It's round. kind of looks like bacon. It's treated and cured a little differently, and has a little different flavor than what we know is bacon. It's delicious. It's and... not smoked. Okay. Um, but that's another type of bacon. And you've probably seen chefs on TV use it, or maybe you've used it yourself. What questions do we have? I know we had a lot of questions and comments. Um, I'm pulling up the Facebook ones now because okay. are you, other than Hank, no one's talking to us in Well, it's early. We're in, just in getting YouTube. started. It's just getting started, dear. So here's the thing. Oh, what's your favorite brand of bacon from AJ? Okay, well, I like whatever's on sale, <laughs> frankly. Um, Phil does not, even though bacon for bus was his idea, he doesn't care for bacon. It's not his favorite thing. Um, and getting bacon around here, unless you make it yourself, when you get it in the diners and things, it's not that good because they, they cook a bunch of it ahead of time and then they reheat it on the flat top and it's just overdone and greasy and tasteless, at least in a couple diners we've been to. Um, but my favorite brand, you know, I really go for the big name brands, Hatfield, Oscar Mayer, um, a couple others, but usually I buy whatever's on sale. Because it can be quite expensive. I mean, it's getting to be like eight, nine, ten dollars a pound. Um, especially then if you go for some of the uncured kinds. There are uncured bacon's that don't have all the nitrites and nitrates and things in it that are treated a little differently. There's beef bacon, which I couldn't find. Normally I can, and I love beef bacon. And it's exactly that. It's taken from the belly of, of the steer, and they treat it like bacon and cure it like bacon. I have a friend that makes bacon ice cream, OMG, from Danielle. Wow, that sounds interesting. Oh, I love the emoji. Would would bacon be in it's the like ice, ice cream, cream I wonder, or as a topping? That would be... Hmm. I like the emojis there with yeah, the two ice cream sauces, cones. Yeah. Very creative, thank you. Yeah. So I buy that on sale, whatever's on sale, and I try not to eat it too much because it's really not that good for you. It's delicious. Um, but I eat it in moderation, at least if my noon coach is watching. Moderation. Maybe All twice right, a month. So let's talk about a bunch of things mm -hmm. that people like to do because they're not really the greatest at flavoring. So when in doubt, they wrap, wrap it, in it in bacon. Wrap it in bacon. So yeah, how much is too much? When is too much too much? I really, we're both over the trend of wrapping things in bacon. Now, we did an episode where we did string bean bundles wrapped in bacon. And once in a while, things like that are really good, but it seemed like in the last couple of years, everything was getting wrapped in bacon. Scallops, filet mignon, turkeys, hams, everything. Peppers, there, there are jalapeno pepper shooters, and, and everything's wrapped in bacon. So then it would be ironic to show them what we're cooking for dinner tonight? We're not cooking dinner tonight, dear. We're going to Steve and Joanne's for dinner. But for tomorrow night, so we talked about, someone mentioned the Amish market. I went to our Amish market yesterday. Let's first talk about where bacon comes from. And I'm, I purposely left this to unwrap it in front of you so you didn't think I was just fooling when I said, oh, I went to the butcher in the Amish market. This is a piece of pork belly and it's uncured, it's untreated. 
Now, look at that. If you look at the side, you can see it looks like bacon. So this would get cured and salted and smoked and treated and then sliced very thinly like this to make that. In this form, it's delicious. You can do a lot of things with it. You can roast it, you can fry it, you can cut it up. You can make your own bacon, essentially. And I'm not sure quite yet what I'm going to do with this. I will most likely pop it in the freezer. I'll wrap it up again and put it in the freezer. But this really wasn't expensive. This is the three pound piece and it was like $14 which when you consider a pound like this, sometimes is eight or nine dollars, that's a better value, in my opinion. But then wrapping things in bacon. When I wrap stuff in bacon, I want it to be something really, really special. I don't want to just wrap something in bacon for the sake of doing that. And I really think that too many people do. Um, you know, you, you have these appetizers, it's bacon wrapped to this and bacon wrapped that, or bacon dipped in chocolate, bacon dipped in sugar, candied bacon. But I prefer something like this. This is a something our little Amish market does. The one meat, one butcher. We don't get these very often. Now, this is a pork roast. And what they've done, if you can see. Hold on, I'm debugging something while oh. you're doing that. Oh, okay, they've cut it open and they've stuffed it with sausage and then they wrap it in bacon. And this is all bacon that they've made. And this is from pork that they have raised. And even right now, oh, the smoky, spicy smell from it. So once in a while, we'll get a full size one of these if we're gonna have the kids over. We got just a small one just to show you today. This is something where, yeah, I'm all about it. Wrap it up in bacon, but use really super special bacon like you get from the Amish market and not the supermarket type of stuff. Now I know you may be saying, I don't have an Amish market near me, I don't have a farmer's market near me. I would be willing to bet that you probably do if you do the research. Um, you know, maybe not if you live in the Australian outback, but if you live even in a city, uh, they, cities all over the world have markets and have farmers markets and, and butchers and things. So I think you just need to seek them out and you'll find really good quality stuff like that. And it might make you a little, it might be a little more pricey at times, but it'll turn you off to overly processed supermarket food that we, we all know. What you got going on over there, dear? Yeah. Uh, All right, there is, I'm just gonna have to talk about it because there is no YouTube okay. chat. It broke, uh, big time. Okay. All right, anyway, Kevin says he's on it. And our friend Dixie says, it's 42 and end well and King Chicken loves his bacon. <laughs> the real thing, not chicken or turkey, go figure. Oh yeah. Well, you know, but every lo everyone loves bacon. Here's a fun fact, did you know that Vegetarians, I don't know about vegans, but vegetarians, the one thing that they will lapse on more than anything else is bacon because it's delicious. All right, and then Hank says, your, uh, Peter, your comments on oven baked bacon. I have a love-hate relationship with that. Um, it's a great way to do it for a crowd but I don't find it any easier. A lot of times it splatters in the oven, and the oven gets all smoky, uh, it sticks to the racks. I, I would just as soon uh, do it in a big skillet first and keep it warm in the oven or even finish it in the oven, but I have done it that way. It's not my first choice. A lot of people swear by it though. Absolutely. Yeah, push the right buttons there, Phil. Yes, okay. please. Okay. Um, Kevin says, Jim Beam's Bacon Bourbon and yeah. Iron Smoke Rattlesnake Rosie's Maple. Okay, you were just Googling these. Come on now. Both are available at your local liquor store. Are they available at our local liquor store? That's the question, Kevin. Thick or thin bacon from Carly. Um, I, depends on my mood. 
if I want just to eat, I would rather thick bacon. If I need to wrap it around something, I'll buy thin bacon. But again, at least where I live, the price can vary between thick or thin and what the sales are. So if there's a better sale on plain old thin bacon, then that's what I'm going to buy. But if the same sale on thick, I'll buy the thick stuff. All right, Kevin in chat swears that uh, he has both the Jim Beam Bacon Bergen and the Iron Smoke Rattlesnake Rosie's Maple Bacon okay. Corn Whiskey. Whew, that's a big word. Yeah. All right, that's all right. So we'll have to investigate that for some cocktails coming up, a bacon cocktail. Hmm. Ah, uh, here's one that'll get you a little bit. Me? Yeah. These are uh, All these that are coming up are Facebook. Our YouTube chat program is down right after I complimented the author on fixing it, but actually we know it to be a problem with our API key at YouTube, but that's another story. Okay. So we'll have it fixed for next week. The nitrites and other chemicals in bacon scare me. Yeah, they scare a lot of people, and um, I actually meant to research that more before this, and you know how life happens. But no, I get that. But you can get bacons that don't have nitrites or nitrates and all those chemicals. They will be clearly labeled that they don't. All right, and Melissa's in chat, and she says, uh, didn't like bacon as a kid or a young adult. Discovered it about 10 years ago. Prefer crispy bacon. Yeah. Great just by itself or crumbled into things to add flavor. Mm -hmm. Veggie salads, mac and cheese, pizza. I, I'm with you. I can take bacon or leave it. Once in a while I want it, but eh. Um, you now we do our Jersey Diner breakfast tour every Saturday and sort of when we try a new diner, it's sort of like required to get bacon, but it's absolutely not my favorite. Mm. I need my sippy cup of water today. <laughs> yeah, um, and I've tried some of those bacons without the nitrites and I don't taste a difference, so I, I don't know why they add them as part of the process, but you can get them that way. And I prefer crispy too, but whatever, I'll eat it. Can I freeze bacon? Yeah, absolutely. When I, when I get a good sale, uh, I will get a few packs and pop them right in the freezer. Absolutely. It's kind of uh, slow now, now without yeah, the chat bit. going. Yeah, well, because I can't bring it up. Uh, All right. Melissa's back, and she says the smell of bacon cookie, though, cooking, is almost amazing. Now, which way do you like to cook it? In the oven or the cast iron? Me? Yeah, or you. Me? I prefer in a cast iron. Or, or at least in a non-stick skillet. But yeah, if I, I do it in the cast iron all the time. Um, but yeah, and I, I agree that that smell gets through the house. And, and like when we go camping with uh, uh, either up at our seasonal place or just with our other friends, you can tell when people are getting up because everyone cooks bacon. And then you can tell like, mm, someone's burning their bacon because it just gets everywhere. We just had this discussion uh, yesterday. <laughs> what do you think about the pre-cooked bacon from Tammy? Um, I, I think it is an abomination. <laughs> I do not like care for it at all. Um, I know it sells well. They keep making it. Uh, I used it once for a photo shoot where we were we had to make cocktails really fast, and, and so we did Bloody Marys, and I made these skewers. So I quickly bought some pre-cooked bacon and put them on, and I tried it, and uh, not so much. Uh, if I'm going to have bacon, I'd rather have it cooked myself or have someone cook it for me than, than the pre-cooked. <laughs> yeah. Again, if I didn't know this wasn't Michelle. <laughs> are there any brands that aren't so salty? Most are so salty I can't taste the bacon from Janice. Wow, some of these emojis that are showing up in this new program. You know, there are low-sodium bacons out there. Absolutely. Again, they're, they're clearly labeled. And I think that's one of the, the draws of turkey bacon. It, it's probably not so, so salty. If people have objections or can't eat pork, they'll eat that. Peter, what wine goes with bacon from Notice Karen? Notice who it's from. Yes, I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, wow, that's a good question. I really don't know. I say whatever wine you like goes to bacon. <laughs> Yeah. Well, but if you're having wine with your bacon and eggs in the morning, then maybe we have a little different problem. Because no one's ever had wine for breakfast, I'm just no, saying. No, I'm sure. 
<laughs> uh, let me see. Go back. Oh, Melissa says, um, how do you manage the splatter from the pan? Used to have a screen cover, but can't find it. Oh, yeah, those screen covers are really, really good. Sometimes you can get them in, in like, it looks like a screen, like a strainer. It's a mesh thing. I have one that's mostly metal with some holes in it, and it's oversized, and, and it fits. It doesn't um, get every little speck of grease, but it cuts it way, way down. And um, Karen, my housekeeper, can attest to that, that she knows when I've cooked bacon without it, the day before or the day of that she comes to clean. She's like, really? No, that's how I manage it. I think the thing too is if you have it on too high of a heat, it's gonna splatter that much more. You really wanna cook bacon on like a medium low to medium. A lot of people crank the heat up to make it sizzle and from Carl, how do you cook bacon for a crowd? Well, a lot of people start, do it in the oven. Some people microwave it. Um, I don't care for that. But I tend to do, I tend to, if I'm cooking for a crowd, I just start it earlier and I do it in batches and then keep it warm in the oven. So if you cook it like three quarters of the way and then keep it in a low oven, it's going to finish in the oven and get nice and crispy. And if you have it on racks or with paper towels, it's gonna drain and wick all that grease away. So you get this great bacon that's not greasy. Though we don't do it, one of our friends actually, when he buys bacon from the farmer's market, will actually cook it all up and then freeze yeah. it, and then defrost it, and then just lightly reheat it. Yeah. And it's still pretty crispy. I mm -hmm. don't, can't think I would try that, but we've tasted it, it's been pretty successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, in YouTube chat, Hank says, no, no, capital no, to the pre-cooked bacon. Exactly, I agree, I agree 100%. Now, Melissa says, and I don't know if I agree with this, though, bacon is a bit like pearls. It just goes with just about everything. It does. It really does. But then people put it on everything all the time, and that's their go-to. You know, like, oh, I don't know how to, to fix this, so I'll just put bacon in it, and that'll make it taste good. It does, but then it tastes bacon and not what you're trying to cook. And that means they haven't learned the art of spices mm -hmm. and herbs and... So they buy something and, and that they're not quite sure, but it tastes bland, and the next thing is they just put bacon on it. Right. So are you tasting bacon, or are you tasting the protein that you bought? Right. Bacon-wrapped scallops is a great example of oh, yeah. when it just doesn't work correctly. Because yeah. really when you do that, you need to partially cook the bacon first. Because otherwise, what happens? You have your beautiful scallop, you wrap bacon, right. The scalp is overcooked or the bacon is mushy. Correct, Brian. Absolutely. So the way around that is to cook it partway through first, let it cool down, then wrap it up. Cook it like three quarters of the way. But again, I don't do that very often because scallops, scallops are delicate and they can go from perfectly cooked to overcooked like that. So I tend to respect the scallop and not hide it behind bacon and things. There's, a lot of other ways to accent the, you know, they have a very delicate flavor of the sea, and there's a lot of other ways to accent that flavor. I mean, wrapped, bacon wrapped scallops are delicious when they're done right, but. Do you have to use Canadian bacon for Eggs Benedict? Well, no. You could use smoked salmon, you could use crab cakes or salmon cakes. Um, Canadian bacon is the traditional way to do it, but yeah, you can use ham. Uh, I saw a recipe for using country ham. Um, so yeah, whatever you want to do with... We've put Canadian bacon on a charcuterie board. We have. Really, it was really, really good, expensive Canadian type bacon. It wasn't, um, that, that we got from a butcher. It wasn't, you know, just the stuff you buy in supermarkets, but although that's, that's delicious, if any supermarkets are watching, I'm not bashing your products. Show me a dessert with bacon from Bobby. Yeah, well, we've seen that, um, not on this channel, but I, I've seen it done. Uh, someone commented about bacon ice cream. Uh, you know, so would you want bacon in the dessert or as an accent to the dessert? I would imagine that maybe like mm, a salted caramel sundae, maybe with some crispy bacon sprinkled on top might be nice. Uh, all or, right, I'm gonna read or, Melissa's. Okay. Uh, comment and then I'm gonna hit go to my favorite section because okay. it's one o'clock here. All right. Melissa says, at what point do you pour off the grease when pan frying? 
Well, it depends on how much you're doing. If, if you're just doing a few slices, I, I don't pour it off at all. If you're doing a lot and you're doing batches, I would do it in between each batch. But guess what? Save that basic baking grease because you can use that in other applications of cooking. Otherwise known as schmaltz. No, that's rendered chicken fat. Dear, you're the Jew. You know better than that. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Wow. Oops. No, but like like my mother and probably your, some people's grandmothers saved it in a coffee can um, because during the war, World War II it was it was needed. All the fats were needed, but and during the Depression, bacon grease was used as a way to flavor other things to stretch meals. So there's lots of good things you can do with bacon fat. All right. So it's, it's that, your turn. It is. It's that favorite time for me. I'm going to drink my cocktail. You're going to do well. You're still going to be on screen. So I know. Be good. I'm still going to drink my cocktail <laughs> before you get it. Um, so, as most of you know, I am a big champion of small YouTube channels. And we probably subscribe to ooh, two or 300 right now. My list is huge. And I try to get out there. And we think it's very, very important to promote other small YouTube cooking channels because of all the hard work we do. So today I'd like to show Chef Christy Time, Christy Time to Cook. Um, and actually, she's not such a little channel anymore. You see, she's 19,000 subscribers. When I found her and started following her early last year, she was at 4,000. So she's had a huge growth. And she is a professional chef and a caterer. But she has a lot of really good down-home videos. Yep. As a matter of fact, if you get a chance, go watch this Julia Child <laughs> one that she did. That's, that's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I can't show you. I going to give you the ad. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, I met Christy before this channel because she actually is a camper. Her and her husband have a truck camper, and they go all over the area and hiking, and a lot of her cooking she does on these. And then I discovered, um, for many of these, her main channel. She also has uh, her own uh, website with recipes that you can find. And, and then let's stick up her URL here. And she also has a Facebook page that's also pretty active. So, Mm -hmm. All right. We have all that too. We're just not quite as big as she is. Yeah, we're getting there. But I like Chef Christie. I like her. I loved that Julie Child episode. That was that was hysterical. Yes, Very it, well done. It was. Mm -hmm. So, so let's get back to the right. I'm going to. Uh, do you have something else to talk about? Because I want to put these things back in the fridge. Uh, while while I'll just take them. And you can keep talking. All right, I'll put them over here for you. Let me put up another lower third you can answer while okay. I go put that stuff away. Uh, hold, please. Uh, hold, please. Kevin says use bacon grease to add flavor. And flavor then... Flavor to what? I don't know. You can know. do that. You can use bacon grease to add flavor to things. You just need to be careful because you can easily make it greasy. So... Um, like, I wouldn't put it in a cocktail because then you have bacon grease in your cocktail. Yeah. Cooking bacon always makes a big mess. How can I avoid that? I thought I answered that. No? Well, someone it, else asked it. Uh, yeah, yeah, somebody in chat someone asked it. That's from chat. Facebook. All right. Well, but so like I said, I, I use the a big bacon screen on it. Um, do it on lower heat is one of the other big things. Because when you crank the heat up because you want to hear it sizzle and pop, that's spreading the grease all over the place. And that's a mistake a lot of people make, unfortunately. All right. All right, here we go. Let me get back to my seat. Thank you. All right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what else do I cook with bacon? Oh, Thanksgiving is coming. Any bacon recipes for that day? We know there's classic things like you can put bacon, crumble bacon with your Brussels sprouts or your string beans. I... Personally, probably wouldn't cook any recipes. We're not big on Thanksgiving here, believe it or not. Um, now, which is funny, because our next week, we're doing another live stream next week, and it's going to be all about Thanksgiving prep. Um, because I've done it for big groups. Maybe you're hosting. 
Maybe you have to go to your mother-in-law's, so we're going to have a special cocktail that you could have that will help get you through. Um, we're going to have lots of tips and tricks. A special bacon dish, not that I would make traditionally. Um, I might do something a little off key. I might do scalloped potatoes and add bacon to that because bacon and potatoes are delicious. Um, I might pair it with, like I said, Brussels sprouts. Or if I was feeling fancy, I would get a really, really good quality bacon, like from the farmer's market or the Amish market, and do the, the string bean bundles wrapped in bacon, something like that I, I would do. All right, Melissa in YouTube chat says, what's the best way to store bacon fat? I don't use much of it at a time while cooking. You can just keep it in a sealed container in your fridge. You can even freeze it, which is probably what I would do would be freeze it. If you're not gonna use it, then I would just freeze it and just save a little bit, whatever much you need. <laughs> okay, somebody's been paying attention okay. in the Facebook group. I saw on Facebook that you're thinking about another cat. How many does that make from Betty? Well, I have to wonder if that's Betty and Wayne from church. <laughs> um, we have a part-time cat. Her name is Maxine. And she's been outside for as long as we've lived here. And we were here going on seven years. And we've seen this cat. And just this past year, since we've had the deck built, she's been coming up. She's very, very friendly. And she seems to know her way around this house. So I think she was someone who had the same model. She belonged to them and they left her behind. Um, so we'll see. She's coming in part time. She comes every day. She slept over a few times. Uh, the boys... Our four boys are still getting used to her, and she's getting used to them. Uh, so sometimes they've had words. Um, but, yeah, that'll give us back up to five cats. So right now we have four and one part-timer. <laughs> but she gets all the benefits of a full-time cat. Beef Wellington appetizer you made at the bed and breakfast was cool. Love the pictures of the rooms from Captain Zero. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was a fun, fun shoot to do because we had just, we've never been to their house before uh, since they moved there. And it, it, it's just one of these big, giant old houses that goes on and on and on. They have like, what, four dining rooms, something like that? Um, yeah, and we spent all this time building our kitchen studio in the basement yeah. just so we could break it down, pack it up, take it to their place, yeah. Yeah. Uh, put it all together, film that episode as the trucks on the road were rolling by, so yeah. we did the best we could with sound. And but then it's fine. come back here and rebuild the studio again. Yeah, but, but it wasn't yeah. that difficult. And Jeff and Terry are probably one of our oldest uh, yeah. camping friends. We met them we, 20 years ago. 20, more than that. Yeah. Camping. Mm -hmm. And that's the days when we were still yeah. in tents and they were still in tents. Um, yeah, and so, just like we used to bring a big crowd, they did. So it was quite party. We've been together. It's coming up on 23 years. They just hit 40. So we've known them for half their time together. And... Uh, yeah, they're good, good guys, and, and it's a neat, neat old house. And very well, in very, very good, good condition. You know, some of those really older homes, I think they said it was built in like 1865 or something, um, or at least the main house, and then there are additions to it, but uh, very good shape. There are a couple outlets that look a little scary, and a couple light switches, but... Now, I know she didn't write this, but I thought this was coming from Dixie, but... I heard a rumor that you ship meatlift people via FedEx. How do I get one from Patty? <laughs> it's just a rumor. <laughs> because when I make meatloaf, um, it usually gets eaten pretty quickly, um, especially by my cameraman, director, producer, IT guy over there. Because I don't make meatloaf. He makes. He actually makes better meatloaf than me. I do. All right. Melissa says... It was fun to see the show from different locations. Oh, yeah. And yes, yeah. we are planning on doing that a bit yep. more yep. now that we have the studio. And um, we've been having issues with some cameras, so we've actually bought a few more. So I think we'll actually end up getting to the stage sometime early next year where we'll have, because of camping, uh, being able to have a set of equipment up there and some down here. Yeah. Though the wow. live stream equipment will have to move, but that's okay. We've been gotten pretty good at that. And that's way too expensive to duplicate that. Or on live stream weekends, we just stay home. That's all. That's all. Bite your tongue. <laughs> I know. I say that now, and then 
you know, when it gets to be April and camp is about to open in May, and I'm like, we have to go every weekend. I love it. All right. Let's talk a little bit about next week and why we're doing a okay, live stream so for next week. Thanksgiving is coming, right? It, it's a week, two weeks away. Right. If we keep and our normal live stream schedule, then our next live stream would be the Sunday after uh, Thanksgiving. And that's a travel day for most people. They're all yeah. going back. Plus, we're already getting tons of questions in Facebook and email uh -huh. about prepping for um, Do you have Thanksgiving recipes, that doesn't prep? include taking lots of Valium. Yeah, so <laughs> we true. thought what we true. would do is do our live stream next Sunday, mm -hmm. and then we'll continue every other Sunday until we get to the holidays. And of course, everyone will take a break for the holidays. This way, we can have a fun live stream right. about how to prep, what you should do, what you should not do. We can have jokes about our favorite relatives that we only see on Thanksgiving. Thank God. I have a couple. I have a very special cocktail recipe for you. Um, hint, it's a cranberry whiskey sour. Um, it's delicious. And uh, a couple special recipes. They don't include bacon, but I got some recipes for you too. And the way this is going to work out with doing it that way, doing one next week, and then the, every other week, we're going to be able to have one right before Christmas. So we can do a Christmas episode too. How are you planning on spending Thanksgiving weekend from Lisa? So right now our plan is we are going to spend it here, just the two of us. We're going to have our own little Thanksgiving. And, you know, it's something that I should probably talk about next week because there are a lot of people out there who are just cooking for two. And how do you cook? Why cook a great big turkey or even turkey breast? It's just the two of us. Um, so I'll be talking about our very special menu that I created. Um, but we're going to spend it here, just us. We're probably going to relax some days, go out Christmas shopping, you know, into the insanity on Black Friday, because we always do, even though we say we're not going to. Um, we'll be doing some filming. We'll be decorating the tree, unless it's already decorated by then. But um, yeah, that's how we're going to do it, just us. Last year, we did the whole entire family on Phil's side, all the kids, their spouses, all the grandkids, his ex-wife. Um, it was great. It was great fun. And the kids all decorated the Christmas tree. We had the teenage grandchildren having the four and five-year-olds up on their shoulders to let them put things up high. And it, it was great fun. And it was, you know, we had Christmas specials on the TV. And it, it was really a, a fun, fun, magical night. And the best part was is we didn't have to clean up afterwards because the kids did it all for us. That was nice. But this year, just us, our own pace, our own time. I heard you start Christmas shopping already from Grill Master 2000. Yes, I did. I absolutely did. And, you know, I, I always say every year I need to start earlier and earlier. And sometimes I have started in August. I don't spend any less money, but I don't spend it all at once. So it's not quite as painful. I mean, I probably spend more doing it that way. The only problem is I start buying things and I go, oh, this is perfect for Kevin. And when I do that, I should put a little post-it note on it for Kevin and put it. But I put things all in the same place, and then I forget what I got for whom, and I start pulling stuff out to wrap it. And I go, oh, well, this would be good for Craig. This would also be good for Kevin. Then again, Michelle might like this. I'll just keep it. All right. Okay. What's Over in YouTube here? chat, Hank says, how do you determine how much to buy and prep per person? Of what? I'm going to assume he means bacon. I don't know. I don't so know, Hank. If, you, if, do you mean bacon or just anything in general? I mean, to me, it would depend on, on, on what it is you're cooking. So if, like, if you're doing, like, say, a turkey, you do a quarter to a half a pound of meat per person and then buy a turkey or two turkeys to get to that amount. So last year we had, what? 13 of us, so I bought two 13 or 12 pound turkeys and I cooked two because it was easier than cooking one giant 35 pound turkey. And that was plenty and that gave us plenty of leftovers. You know, if it is bacon, then I would do, again, for any type of meat, a quarter to a half a pound depending on what it is. If it's something like an appetizer or little individuals, you, you figure if, if it's like the very first course and it's just to be an appetizer like with cocktails, you do three to four of each one. If it's and what that's we'll do all for next is. week, since we're going to dedicate that to prepping for Thanksgiving, 
Right. Uh, we'll, we'll check we can some have of, that in We'll there. check some of the uh, audiences and uh, check some of the uh, websites to see what they say. But we've always gone with the idea, because there's a lot of bone in Turkey, that mm -hmm. if you're going to go by weight, half a pound is enough mm -hmm. per person. So for, you know, 12 people and so on. Right. We... We had an incident at camp this year uh, where one of the groups we belonged to was throwing a party and uh, they had a, a professional chef who did all the calculations, but he did them wrong. And the party attracts the whole camp, which could be three or 400 people. It's open to anyone. So they did potato salad as one of the sides. There's potato salad and coleslaw and, and a lot of other food. So the chef who was in charge of potato salad told his minions, okay, go buy how much? 55 pounds. 55 pounds of potatoes. So, you know, 55 bags of potatoes. Oh, yeah. So the guy who was doing that went and bought 55 five-pound bags of potatoes. So 55 times five, that's a lot of potatoes. And that, uh, doing large outdoor parties is one of our expertises. Yeah. So... They said plan for 300. Well, you don't assume that 300 people are going to eat potato salad. Right, the general right. rule of thumb is uh, for each side, only two-thirds of the people will take it. Right. So now right. that 300 becomes you know, 200, and then a normal serving is a quarter of a pound. So, yeah, right. he made 345 pounds of potato salad. Yeah. They had it for weeks. They took it to the... Every party they, they went to, like, hey, we brought some potato salad. And, and yeah, it was crazy. And I, we really had to laugh about it. We weren't involved in it, but uh, the guy doing the shopping for the event was staying with us, and he shows up. He's like, I need help unloading all these bags of potatoes. And we said, what did you do? All right, Hank, so we're going to address that question next week. Yeah, in we'll, more detail. We'll model it specifically for, um, Do it for, Thanksgiving. for the Thanksgiving, but we'll also show you our tips if you're mm -hmm. doing it as an outdoor group party because or, the, that planning is totally different, especially when you're yeah. talking hundreds. Or um, if you're doing just a cocktail party and everything is all appetizers. And so. we have mm -hmm. a lot of years of experience do. of doing parties yeah. of yeah, we do. 100 to 300 people. And we've gotten it right to the point where there's very rarely any leftovers without running out. So, mm -hmm. Even Halloween this year, we didn't have any leftovers, really, that I can think of. There's maybe a little bit of fried chicken left. Speaking of that. Oh, how was Halloween for Margaret? Halloween was great fun. So we had a nice party. It was much smaller scale than last year. Um, you want to tell them what we did? So last year, we started the story of Connie and Floyd. So our house is built on a former pig farm. And back in the day, in the 20s and 30s, Mobsters, the way that they would dispose of the bodies, would they would throw them to the pigs in the pig farms out in the country because the pigs would eat anything and everything, so there'd be no remains left. Um, so they, we, right after we built this house, we, we both happened to see one day someone walk through the dining room in the middle of the day, and we're like, what the heck? So this story started bubbling in my head that, oh, we have a couple of ghosts, so we named them Connie and Floyd. Connie and Floyd are like, Bonnie and Clyde, but they're kind of stupid too. And so they live here with us, and, and that was the story last year. And they, they spent the whole party talking through our sound system and talking smack on all the guests. So this year, we continued that theme, and we had a much smaller party. So the theme this year was that they were annoyed at the house being wrecked after the party last year. And they were very angry with us that we were having another party. At the same time, they decided to lock all their valuables up in a safe. And yes, we went out and bought a safe just for this party because that's the level of dedication that we have. So they locked all their values in, but then Connie forgot the combination. And she had given herself clues all over the house. Uh, so we, we had things all over the house, numbers, clocks set to certain things. So the guests had to come and figure out the combination to the safe by looking at the clues around the house, listening to what Connie and Floyd were saying over the sound system all night long. And some of the things they said were very misleading, some were not. And it was great fun because it forced everyone to work together, to talk to one another, to engage each other. Because uh, a lot of times at parties, you, know, you kind of sit there, and I don't know you and you don't know me, and you sit there and it's awkward. Um, 
But this and then we're going, did you try this combination? Did yeah. you try this? We know it's six digits, and there's right, at least a right. nine and a five. And did you try that? So finally, our friend Lance uh, got it, and he won the prize, um, which was a, a crystal brandy set. Um, he also kidnapped Valenturtle by mistake, but that's okay, because Valenturtle was also locked in the safe. But that was our party. It was great fun. Then Halloween Day, we were overrun with kids, and we don't do candy. We have a little bit of candy, but we have a movie-grade popcorn maker. So everyone in our development goes out on the front porches and in the driveways, and, and everyone's in costume, and, you know, like, this one's giving out hot dogs. That one has shots for the grown-up. We do popcorn, and the smell just gets all over development. The best part of the day of Trick or Treat was this little girl. She was, what, like seven or eight? She's dressed as a bride. Yeah, and it was like four in the afternoon. It, it, the, the big crowd hadn't started yet. It was just beginning. But she was walking up and she screamed, the popcorn house, and took off at a full run up, this, up our front walk with her two brothers behind her. And the popcorn maker was just finishing another batch, so she got this really fresh. And that just made our day because clearly she's lived here for a while and, and she knows we're in the popcorn house. But we had a lot of neighbors coming by just for that. All right, we're coming up to an hour. Are we really already? We are. So why don't we talk about what's planned for Tuesday's episode since we've been well, doing so much bacon? We are doing a little bacon episode on Tuesday. I'm making a Pennsylvania Dutch, I believe it's Pennsylvania Dutch, recipe called hot bacon dressing. And it's, it's delicious. Now, I'm going to serve it on a salad, but it's one of those things that you could put on an old boot, and then you would want to eat the old boot because it just makes everything delicious. It's bacony, but that's not the hot, that's not the front flavor. So it's delicious. It's, it, it's not one of those wrap the old boot and bacon type of things. It's, it's delicious and very easy. And did we come to a consensus for Fridays? Uh, is no. So it's either a cocktail. So it's either going to be, uh, what do we call it? A uh, holiday cookie martini? Yes. So, yeah, depending on how our week goes, Friday's episode is either going to be another cocktail that we've already filmed, the holiday cookie martini, uh, which is really crazy and fun and delicious, um, or it's going to be the basic skills, uh, the sauce espanol, if I can get myself together to film that. So we're going to see how our... Our week and goes. that will finally be number five. That'll be number that, five in, 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 the, series, in the Mother Sauce series. It took us three months, yeah. but yeah. Well, you know, it's kept people engaged because the Mother Sauce recipes have all done very well. So do you want to uh, like show them our website and remind them that we have website and Facebook I too? Will. Can you do that? So why don't you talk for a second? Okay. Uh, you know, do a tap dance. Choke on my water. <clears throat> So we showed Chef Christie's uh, website and everything, and, and it occurred to us, we never show off our own website, and we do, we have this great website, and we are also very active on Facebook. Many of you probably know that already, uh, but we just wanted to show that out there. Okay. There we go. So this is our website, letscelebrate.tv, and you can, on our YouTube channel, you can actually click on the banner, and up in the top, it will show you the last five. And as you roll down, yep. it will show you the next live stream and the latest videos. And more importantly, a lot of times we get people say, how do you print out the menu, oh, uh, yeah. excuse the me, recipe. The, the recipe. And YouTube doesn't allow for that, but our website does. And there is the recipe right from the YouTube description. So you can use your ability within uh, your browser to print it. You can also watch it right from. You've heard of cheese boards, charcuterie. Right from the site. If you're looking for a specific recipe that uses maybe chicken, and you don't know what we did, if you just type the word chicken up there, and it will show you we have 50 recipes or 50 things that have chicken in it. Maybe you're looking for something with lamb. We didn't do too many lambs yet. No, but I've got a lamb Oh, there lamb we go. Recipe. So we got a few, including some very, very old ones we did. Yeah, or you can hit away. the down arrow for recipes and say, all right, I want to see everything they did for desserts. And it will show them all to you. So the website's actually a best place to look. If you're on YouTube on our channel and search, 
The problem is it doesn't necessarily search us, it searches everybody, but the website's really easy to get to. Yeah. And again, if you're gonna go to the website, it is Let's Celebrate TV. If you have an idea for um, an episode. Or a question or a comment. Right, you yeah. can just send it to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, let me get back to my correct super source for us. Right. There we go. Show our Facebook page. Can you do that? I can do that too. I mean, we're there too. And we have a, quite a lot of followers on Facebook. What was it, almost 500? Yep. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. Yeah, really. I thought you had it already queued no, up. No, I didn't I'm have sorry. it queued up. There we go. Oopsie doopsie. I'll just drink uh, my water. Uh, the problem is the display for us is a little different because we're managers, but oh, we'll, we'll show it anyway. Yeah. And we get quite a bit of activity going on. As a matter of fact, Peter just scored two more of his... Um, shortbread molds. Shortbread molds, which... Um, th you can they, still get them. They haven't been eBay, made in yep. years, and we found a couple on eBay. One of them was never used, and one's only slightly used. Uh -huh. Um, so the website's great for that. We also get into really long conversations on the Facebook about what people did because we asked them that they did one of our recipes um, to take a picture of it and yeah. tell us what they did differently. So you can get some great ideas. Um, and thank you to everyone in Facebook who left the comments because yeah. that's all you're seeing today since my YouTube thing is well, broken yeah. again. It's all right, dear. It's not us being broken, it's them, so. Yeah, I hear you. Fixed. And you know, something has to go wrong every live stream. It, it just it just does. And that's why it's called live. Yeah. All right, so. How are we doing on time? It, it's time to go. All right. That's sad. Yes, it is. So, from the two of us. All right, we will see you on Tuesdays for our regular episodes. Fridays for Cocktail Friday or Basic Skills. And of course, uh, for our live streams on every other Sunday, except next Sunday is our next live stream. We're doing back to back, don't forget, and we'll send you a reminder. So thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. I'm gonna cheers you with water. Cheers. And we'll be Thank you.